If you've watched our review on For the King, then it's no surprise that one of us is a huge fan of Dungeons and Dragons. While Dungeons and Dragons is a pretty stripped down affair, Divinity Original Sin 2 takes everything we love about roleplaying and puts it into the most fully realized gamification of D&D yet. If you're sitting there wondering, how does this 3 year old game hold up in 2020, then you're already at the right place. We're here as the co-op bros to not simply review Divinity 2, but tell you what makes it a great co-op game for you and your best friend. So you've come, I can see you've traveled far. <laughs> but I am not a mere rock, I am a sage. <laughs> Oh yeah, that's good. <laughs> Have you ever found yourself playing a really good single player experience and you think, man, this game would be so good if my best friend was playing with me. But then when you really think about it, it just wouldn't work because the story would be screwed up and how would all these systems work in multiplayer and you just kind of forget it. Well, there's this game called Divinity Original Sin 2 and it pretty much just says screw that to everything I just mentioned and somehow makes an amazing single player experience extremely accessible in co-op. Getting started is pretty easy actually, so let me walk you through it. My friend Gabe started his own campaign and set it to multiplayer when he began. He chose to only let us, his friends, join and then created the campaign. From there, anytime we wanted to play, Gabe just booted up the campaign and sent the invite. Don't take away that this was Gabe's campaign and we were just helping out and joining in when he felt like inviting us. From the outset, we made our own characters, we made our own decisions, and we played our own battles. And what's really neat is this drop in and out mechanic that you just don't see in other games. If Gabe ever wants to do something really quick, he could just hop in and do it. Or if our friend Jake is busy, but Gabe and I want to play, we both just do some side missions and control Jake's character for him. There are almost no limitations in what you could do with multiplayer and Divinity, and it's not something that we've ever seen anywhere else. The only limitation I can say is the main person who started that campaign better be the one that's always willing to play. And shout out to my best friend Gabe, because he was. The I'm master. Look at the ladder. Ready? What? <laughs> <laughs> That's amazing. <laughs> yeah, I like the legs. The legs are my favorite part. <laughs> oh my god, dude. That's funny. Okay, look. I'm just gonna get this out of the way right now. Divinity Original Sin 2 is one of the best role-playing games ever made, and you should go buy it right now. So yeah, I guess we're done here. That's the whole video. It's hard to cover all the ways this title makes for an incredible co-op experience, but we're gonna try. Right off the bat, Divinity gives you and your party total freedom to make decisions however you want. Lots of developers promise this, but Larian Studios really delivers here. You're free to talk to anyone, steal from anyone, and yes, you literally can kill anybody. Arriving at a town, Andrew might go shopping, Jake could discover a new quest for us, and of course, it doesn't take long for me to get us in a fight when I get caught stealing from the wrong guy. I'm fighting a lizard guy. You're fighting a lizard guy? Okay, coming. What are you doing? Fighting lizard people. I needed to steal his fire scrolls. Why do you <laughs> always steal it? <laughs> what is happening? <laughs> Should I quick load it real quick? Yeah, let me quick no. load it. No, it's or do you want to kill him? Okay. I'll kill him at this point. This freedom extends to the excellent CCR campaign, which sees you and your party save the land of Rivalon from the Void Woken once and for all. Except, the world of Divinity isn't quite that black and white and we often found ourselves discussing which path to take at critical moments in the story. Uh, ask him what it'll do now, remind him you came for information, ask him what he knows before about the sources who may be able to help you, tell him you found evidence of death fog in the cave. Oh dang. Death fog. Wait, that okay. might be really common. That might be really confrontational. Yeah. I, that, no, let's the, do the other we, one. If we tell him that we found the death fog, we're, we're going to him and not the magisters, right? Well, uh, I think so. I don't know. All right, let me see. I'm going to see. Let's ask keep, him. Yeah, just go from the top down. Do we side with the crime boss Lohar who means well despite the mistakes he's made? Or do we turn him into the justice of the crooked magisters and maybe avoid more conflict down the road? These decisions and their consequences could fall on any one of our characters, which makes the game feel really alive and cooperative. Moreover, each of our characters is uniquely positioned to tackle these conflicts differently based on our chosen race, background, and stats. 
Coordinating to make these differences our strengths is key to a balanced party. And even though I am quote unquote hosting the game, it's not really my game. It's our story and Divinity gives us the freedom to do well whatever we want. And let me just clarify that at first you might be like me and think, do whatever you want? That's a lot. I mean, this game is massive and there are so many branches to what you can do. Combat is no exception. Gabe, Jake, and I were sure to build an approach to our characters so that everyone had a specific role. When the Phoenix Fighters go to fight, we're a three-headed attack you don't want to mess with. I'm three Phoenix side. One, two, Phoenix boys! Oh dang, the, Irre the Avengers are here. <laughs> I'm Iron Man. We're all Iron Man. Gabe is of course a spell casting mage, dropping bombs from the back line like he just ate a can of beans. Jake is all about getting up in your face and letting you feel his wrath. And I'm just the tankiest boy in school, bringing everybody's Ooh, shields yeah, back up good. when need be. Let me mend some metal here, you know what I mean? Mend it real good. Oh, baby. That's for everybody. I want some more. Soothe your, soothe your colds, you know what I mean? Dang. Beautiful. And then, just to give everybody a little break, let's taunt this big boy. Moana, That's make defense. way. Make way. <laughs> that, is, that is a lot of defense that you just put out right there. That's not defense. Oh, and there's also this guy, Fane, who sometimes is clutch as our archer from the back, and sometimes is an idiot god, Fane. Why? It all works together really well, and I love combat in this game. I cannot get enough of it. I think I could legitimately just rock out to the bar fight music for hours on end. All of this could potentially explain why we've killed so many innocent people in our campaign so far, but we try not to think about that. And pro tip, there are a ton of build guides out there for you to use. Jake is running one himself, but after a lot of searching and a lot of testing, and I mean a lot of searching, I ended up just making my own and it's just as viable. Don't feel intimidated by all those stat lines, it'll come together for you. I should clarify before we finish this video that you might have gotten to this point and thought, well, there's only two of us, so how are we going to make up a party of four? That was our case. We just had me, Gabe, and Jake, which means we were one spot short of a full party. But there's no need to worry. There are several characters that you can get to join your party at the beginning of the journey, so be on the lookout. Despite all his flaws, we wouldn't be the death marching sorcerers we are without our boy Fane. Despite being 3 years old, Divinity Original Sin 2 is right up there with the best of them in 2020. It does help that this game has seen a steady stream of updates via the gift bag feature, the full Relics of Rivalon update being the biggest yet and dropping as early as last week. There honestly is no better time to jump into this vast top down RPG. So call up two of your best friends, pick up that bony guy Fane, and get ready for some serious adventuring. Just try not to kill everyone in Fort Joy like we did. Guys, thank you so much for watching our videos. We recently just hit a thousand subs. That's insane. We never thought that this little project of ours would get to that point, and we could not be more thankful for everybody. Old games and new, we'll keep finding all those co-op gems for you and your best friends. As always, comment below any co-op games you want us to cover. We'll see if we can make it happen. Catch you next time on another episode of The Co-op Bros. We, we, we put a stop to a whole crime syndicate. Yeah, we did. Oh wait, I got I got something for both of you guys. This should be good armor. <laughs> <laughs> That's <was> great. <laughs> I oh, that makes me I so happy. I cannot wear it. <laughs>